She claimed she fell in love with him on day one of the trial and then admitted in an interview with the press that they had kissed on the first day of the trial and had sex just before the verdict was actually returned. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> I love you. Just before we get started today, I will say that today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on them in just a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. As always, I'm your host, Simon. Welcome, welcome. What happens here? One of my writers, in this case, Liam. Thank you, Liam. Really me. This is a follow-up. He writes me a script. I'm going to read it. Sam's going to add in some of the finest vintage memes. This is definitely a follow-up to... We did a, a, a video about like the, tw the, the, the most insane jury decisions in the UK. And uh, I was like, Liam... I know, like, jury decisions in the UK, but they, I'm sure they're crazy. But I also feel like the Americans just do that sh steroids because they're just like, yeah, I mean, look, fuck Alex Jones, right? But also 1.4 billion. <laughs> Holy sh**. American juries, what's up? <laughs> That's insane. Today, a sequel to the dumbest jury verdicts of all times. So where else can we go other than the bigger and dumber verdicts from the good old US of A and maybe an entry from their maple syrup stealing cousins? When gathering cases for this episode, I'd relied heavily on my own PhD research. Yeah, that's right. Liam is a doctorate in law. <laughs> Liam's a proper big brain. <laughs> but I've expanded the criteria for what makes it onto the list, as well as looking at juries who themselves committed some sort of absurdity. I've also included situations where lawyers or judges have been able to make an abuse of the jury system due to some extremely strange rules that are applied on the other side of the great blue puddle. Although, like last time, I still won't be mentioning cases that only got the verdict wrong, looking at you, OJ. That is a lucid, intelligent, well-thought-out objection. Wait, <laughs> can you say, I mean, look, Liam's obviously the big law brain here, but when you say, like, a jury got it wrong, isn't the whole point of the jury is they get it right? Like, even if you're like, that is fucking stupid and insane, it's like, well... The jury decided, and that is now what is legally right. Because that's the, that's the pot, that's the, they're like the ones who decide. And then it's like, boom, done. Which is why we can say like, Theranos was a fraud and all of that stuff, because it was proven. Although did they have a, I guess they had a jury because it was America, right? It's like that, the jury's a final word. And although I don't know, then you've got like, don't you, you've got like the Supreme Court and shit. That's not a jury. That's just a bunch of old dudes and ladies. So strap in and get ready for a weird and wonderful exploration of what happens when the lowest in the North American gene pool perform their civic duty. And I already feel like, I feel like we discussed this in the first one of these. Already, people who get stuck on jury duty, they're the people who couldn't work out how to get out of jury duty, right? So you're already like on the wrong side of that intelligence curve, aren't you? <laughs> cause I don't know if I got, I mean, I can't get called for jury duty cause I live in a country where they don't have juries, which is sweet. But if I was in the, and also the UK, it doesn't really happen that much because we have jury like jury trials are not that common but i don't know i i've i've heard of people getting out of it you just act like a bit of a dick or whatever you're like no no, no i just I, I missed the death penalty just start saying things like that well i i see i it's just like no 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 i i don't i'm not necessarily a racist but i do have some racist opinions <laughs> Especially Hitler. You know, just just sh like that. And then it's like, it's not going to look good. People are going to think you're a bit of a clown. But then you don't have to do jury duty. 12 angry grannies. Now, I mentioned many brain blaze memes ranging from Simon murdering dogs to the meme making light of all of us writers being trapped down here in the basement. There was one meme I wasn't able to cover, but don't worry, we're going to get to it today. That's right, it's Theranos time. Don't worry, <laughs> Liam, I already covered that in my tangents in the introduction. Now, Simon, you might be stroking your beard and wondering, but Liam, what does Theranos have to do with juries? Well, I know exactly what, because Americans have juries for civil trials, right? Well, that's because the founder of Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, is currently standing trial for numerous indictments of fraud. Wait, when was this written? She's not been standing... No, no, no. She was, she was convicted ages ago. And I know it's not that old. She was waiting her sentencing, which has now happened. And so pe people were like... Simon, I think she's only getting a few months. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. And I was really pleased because I was like, I wrote a tweet and I was like, look, let's just see how it goes. But I don't think it's going to be a few months. 11, 11 point something years, which obviously she'll appeal. But I mean, that's a f lot of time. I mean, I, I, I was like, it'll be years. I didn't think it would be 11 years. That is a long time in f***ing prison. The numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board, 
Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11. This. For anyone not aware of these details, Theranos effectively was producing a box which they claimed could test someone's blood with only a pinprick. This was plainly untrue and led to billions of dollars of damage being done. If anyone wants to find out more about Theranos, then please use the source that I used to research it, a previous Business Blaze video which explained the whole fiasco. Before we touch on the particular title for this section and what actually happens with the jury, I want to give some context as to what a serious fraud trial is like and how we do it over here in England and Wales. Fraud is a very complex offence that requires deception, dishonesty, monetary damage, the intent to cause monetary damage, and generally a lot of boring financial history evidence through thousands of bank statements. You know what's bad? Leah was reading off those things and I already turned off. <laughs> Do you ever, I mean, you must get that right. You must watch these videos sometimes and we get into some little boring thing and you guys, and you're just like, oh, I didn't pay attention, but it probably doesn't matter. I do that as well. Let's just go back. I don't remember what that list of things was. It was something like deception, dishonesty, monetary damage, the intent to cause monetary damage and generally also, uh, whatever. Look, it's, <laughs> let's just move on. It's, it's stuff. I'm sure it'll be explained if it's relevant. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. In the case of Theranos, it also includes lengthy and extremely boring scientific evidence being presented to prove that the overrated toasters can't do what they claim to be capable of. The first issue with fraud trials is that they're boring. Or the way I explain to the students that I lecture, murder is sexy, fraud is naked Margaret Thatcher in winter. Yeah. It's just not that, like, there's a juicy murder trial. You're like, oh, shit. And Theranos is, like, the most interesting of, like, corporate cases, right? It's the one that's in the news. It was this huge scandal. Like, maybe Bernie Madoff compares. Now there's the uh, the FTX one with the the, the, the scammy dude, uh, allegedly. <laughs> uh, and all of this stuff. And it's like, I still don't really know what the exact details of the Theranos thing where even though I made a video about it because it's, it is kind of boring but yeah <laughs> it just is the reality it's, it's just the reality is like finances is often I mean there's interesting things for sure but mostly it's boring the second issue with fraud trials is how long they last it is a general rule of thumb for advocates that any presentation you have planned takes 10 times longer if it's a fraud case there are a number of reasons causing this like the fact that generally defendants accused of fraud are rich and can afford better lawyers <laughs> Oh, it's not funny, but it's true. Uh, but also because juries absolutely hate fraud trials. For example, two of the longest jury cases in English law were both fraud trials, the Jubilee Line corruption trial and the trial of Edwin and Lorraine McLaren. The first lasted 21 months and the second 320 court days. F*** now. And I'm sorry, I realized I said that it was a civil case earlier but, uh, for the Theranos thing, I think, but obviously it's not. It's criminal fraud. Even though it's about, like, I always want to, even though I study this shit, I'm, whenever you're like business, you're always like civil, civil, civil. But it's like, no, no, no. This is where people get bad serious <laughs> and do stuff. And then they're like, that's a crime. <laughs> it crosses that border. Stop right there, criminal scum. Nobody breaks the law on my watch. The first trial collapsed when a juror went on strike. Three jurors lost their jobs. One lost a promised place at Oxford University. And a final one even lost her husband-to-be because they had to reschedule their wedding and eventually lost the venue. I mean, oh, boo-hoo, you have to get married a little bit later. Three people lost their sources of income and someone lost a place at Oxford. Their whole life is getting delayed a year. And that's if they can get back into Oxford next year. That is something that's, that's a major thing. Having to get a new wedding venue, I'm sorry, but cry me a f***ing river. The second trial managed to secure a conviction, but not only did the jurors involved have to face counselling after, but the length of time they'd served on the jury actually was longer than the sentence <laughs> given to the defendants. You cannot be serious. How can the trial last longer than the sent? If that's the case, just can't you negotiate and be like, yo, look, judge, I'll do 200 days in prison uh, or, or whatever the punishment was. Well, sentence, yeah, so they went to like jail or whatever. Just, I know there's no like plea bargaining in the UK and stuff, but maybe in cases like this, there should be because that's insane. 
This is why England and Wales, we don't let jurors handle fraud trials anymore if there is even the slightest risk that they might go beyond a month or two. This is a lesson that it seems the Americans are just beginning to learn. The first issue with the Theranos case happened fairly early on, when it was discovered that two of the jurors had seen the fictionalized version of the events. No, not the Brain Blaze episode, but instead the movie Dropout. Luckily, the jury consisted of 15 jurors for this exact scenario, so that if any of them had to be yeeted out, that there they could be, from the perspective of the outside world, all seemed fine and settled. However, this perspective only continued due to the fact that reporting restrictions were in place to prevent journalists attending the hearing from reporting in too much detail on what the jury was actually doing in the trial. These restrictions were lifted when a third juror was dismissed about a week into the trial. Before I tell you why they were dismissed, ask me, answer me a question. You've heard how boring a fraud trial can be, so what would you do to pass that they fell asleep? They f fell asleep, didn't they? <laughs> How could you not? How could I'm like I will fall asleep in boring shit. I know this from school. Like I fell asleep. I've fallen asleep in class. I've fallen asleep in chapel. There's a fall asleep in assembly because that it's always really warm. It's really you're kind of just sitting in a comfortable chair and something boring is happening and you're just like Ugh, and you fall asleep. Look, I don't blame you. And maybe that's how I'd get out of jury duty. I'd just be like, oh. And they'll be like, what was that sound? Nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> and they'll be like, did you fall asleep? We're sort no. It's like, you're under oath. Yes. <laughs> Dismissed. Yes. <laughs> A jury are not under oath though are they that's that's not that's not correct if you answered play sudoku then congratulations you won our prize oh <laughs> that's terrible a free trip to the chemical castration center that's right in a trial resulting from elizabeth holmes lying about mechanical equipment which led to false hiv and cancer diagnoses caused miscarriages and did untold harm to countless people a juror decided it would be appropriate to play sudoku in testimony i don't want to sound like i'm a future serial killer but it's fun <laughs> You know what the funny thing is? Um, all of that stuff, right, about the people, you know, getting misdiagnoses and stuff, I think she was found not guilty on all of those charges and was just guilty on the money charges, which is intense. Because you're like, yeah, okay, so some rich people lost some money. And they're like, but people got false cancer diagnoses, which, I mean, <laughs> I was about to say, I don't want to, like, you know, um, go, oh, no, rich people lost money and not have sympathy for that. I don't. But, <laughs> I mean, I have some sympathy. But not as much as someone who's got like a false cancer diagnosis who's just a regular person that that is that is worse but that's not what they got her on not only is this a shocking miscarriage of justice but i've never even met somebody under 70 who plays sudoku what sudoku's great i haven't played sudoku in years because i literally don't have time to do anything except for work and spend time with my family everyone's always like simon how do you spend time with your family it's like well i just work normal hours i work like 40 hours a week like a normal person and then i go home but the home time is just family there's no time where i'm like let's sit down to play the sudoku that's what old people are for old people and young people before you have kids and then when your kids have left except for simon it looked like he'd play it what the fuck? <laughs> So how do I look like I play Sudoku? Do I look like some old ass man or something? I mean, I know, I know, I kind of do. Uh, Future's now, old man. Uh, so next time you decide to commit fraud, how confident will you be when you see a juror look down at their notes? Now let me interrupt today's episode of the show to tell you about today's glorious sponsor, Squarespace. What does Squarespace do well? Squarespace allow you to make a beautiful website. You go in there, you go to squarespace.com. You go in there and you're like, I want to make a website. It could be for anything. Let's say you're a photographer. And you go in there and there's like a bunch of templates for photographers or bloggers or online stores or whatever they will have something that suits your needs you go in there you select the template you swap out some things and you're good to go and that's an all squarespace offers they also provide you with powerful analytics and insights into who visits your site how they interact with your content squarespace's analytics include tools like page views traffic sources audience geography and more so not only do you know people are visiting your website but you know who that i mean not specifically who they are that would be creepy but you kind of know where they're from what they're up to and uh, what they're interacting with which just makes you build a better website also you can stand out in anybody's inbox with Squarespace email campaigns, convert email subscribers into loyal customers with their easy-to-use templates and automation features, all provided by Squarespace. Now, there are separate tools that allow you to do that, but you have to pay for those, and they can be really expensive. And uh, Squarespace, it's included, and it's easy. 
is better. Connect your social media profiles to your website and automatically push between platforms to guarantee all of your followers are up to date. Squarespace comes with powerful blogging tools, allowing you to share anything from stories, photos, and videos to simple updates for your fans. Schedule your posts and make your content work for you. So look, if you think Squarespace is right for you, and honestly, if you're building a website in any way, it is right for you. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash blaze to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to today's video. 12 Angry Broken Hearts Philosophers have often had much to say about the law, whether it's Aristotle's The Law is Reason Free from Passion, or Thomas Hobbes's Law in General is Not Counsel but Commands, or amateur ph philosopher Joe Strummer. I thought the law on the law won. Perhaps no statement of deep philosophical pondering reaches the level of unanimous acceptance quite like the great philosopher K. Rowland's Love Lies in Strange Places. These are a lot of references that I'm not getting. I mean, I know the one was like, I fought the law and I fought the law and the law one. I fought the law and the law one. That's a weird song. I just realized that guy can't sing very well, can he? Or maybe he can, but it's kind of like, it's just a bit shouty. It's like Pink Floyd. I don't need no education. Shut the fuck up, Pink Floyd. Fuck you. And also the, the guy in there, he's a complete bell, in my opinion. Um, Roger Walters, whatever the fuck his name is. That prick. <laughs> Allegedly, in my opinion. It's just not a statement of fact. He's not factually a prick. It's just my opinion that he's a prick. Look him up if you want to know why. No offense, but it sounds like some fucking commie gobbledygook. Perhaps no statement of deep philosophical pondering reaches the level of unanimous acceptance quite like the great philosopher K. Rowland's Love Lies in Strange Places. Did I read that already? I'm not sure. Again, when we get too deep into like these uh, references that I don't get, it's another place I just kind of turn off. Now, I'm sure that based on that introduction, many of you have probably already guessed what one particularly dumb juror did, but I'm afraid that the full facts are far worse than you currently expect. Liam, you tend to overestimate me because whenever someone says that, it's it's kind of like yeah no I I don't I don't know does anyone else is I'm sh maybe there's like three people in the audience who have extraordinarily big brains and they're like I know exactly what he's talking about but I'm just like I don't know where this is going <laughs> I have this general rule with my videos this is a fun little I mean for me it's interesting there's this little rule that I go by which is like no one likes to be talked down to but everyone likes to feel smart which is why when I like have a writer or whatever and they do something and I'm like mm, some people aren't gonna get this because that makes people feel stupid and like a great rule i think it's a great rule i think it makes my videos genuinely quite a lot better than uh, a lot of stuff that i read or watch on the internet is just always over explain things like there's no reason not to very few people are going to get frustrated being like oh you don't need to explain this to me but uh, but people are going to get frustrated when they're made to feel stupid because they don't get something everyone likes to feel smart you'd be like oh, i already know that you feel good about yourself and if something's being explained to you in detail you're like oh, i don't feel good about myself understanding it it's just a good rule it's just a good rule i really think it is you think i'm stupid i think you're an absolute moron the case in question here is our aforementioned Canadian case. In fact, this was the first Canadian case, the Canadian law, which raised the question of whether a jury's verdict could be overturned because of the reasoning of that verdict. Isn't that what appeals are for and shit? Based on previous episode, though, I'd venture to say that this only means they didn't catch the Ouija boards and racists rather than not having any. The defendant was notorious gangster Peter Gill, who was charged with two brutal gambling killings, although, don't worry, he was found not guilty by a jury of 11 anonymous individuals and Gillian Guess. Who the f*** is this? I don't know no idea. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do we know her name? Well, a few months after Jill was Gill? Jill? Jill. Jill. But it's spelled with a G. Gillian? Jillian? Who gives a f -ian? So they were found guilty by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, based under police surveillance. Well, it's under surveillance. They recognized Guess when she was seen dancing. What the f is going on? One hour later. Now, you may be asking how we know her name. Well, a few months after Gill was found not guilty, the Royal Canadian Mounted. P Who the fuck's Gill? I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Oh my god, there's someone called Gil and someone called G Jillian. It's very confusing. So I, I'm so, I know I've got a small brain, but oh my god, Liam, you need to account for how small my brain is. Now, you may be asking how we know her name. Well, a few months after Gil, the guy who was originally found guilty, was found not guilty, oh, sorry, not guilty, by the rot. Was originally. Oh, for fuck's sake!
Well, a few months after Gill, the guy who was uh, in the trial, was found not guilty, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police placed him under surveillance. While under surveillance, they recognized Guess when she was seen with him at a prominent nightclub. Recognized, recognized, you may cry. How dare they recognize a juror whose identity is meant to be kept top secret? Mostly, yes, but they didn't recognize her from jury duty. You see, Guess was a former criminologist and served the RCMP as a counselor. She was recognized as she had actually worked with officers who were currently watching her. The RCM's so confused. I don't know what's going on, Liam. There's some confusing thing about something. Am I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, <laughs> you broke it. The RCMP, upon recognizing Guess, launched a further investigation which would uncover the shocking truth. Guess had been called up for jury service despite her role in the police force. She had not been discharged as at the time the trial was taking place, she was not herself involved with the investigation into Gill and neither were any of her close co-workers. What the RCMP would uncover, though, partly through interviews that guests had given to the press, was what had actually happened at trial. Apparently, upon being led into the courtroom and sat in the jury box, Guess would immediately fall head over heels with who she believed to be a lawyer. Guess would even use the term love at first sight, although she would not even take a second guess when, only a few minutes later, she was informed that the love of her life was not a lawyer, but actually the accused murderer, Peter Gill. Now, a small matter like double murder wasn't something to stop Guess. It was uncovered by the police that she entered a relationship with Gill only two weeks after the jury which she, sh she served on had found him not guilty of the double murders. This, of course, led to outrage. The most outrageous part, the jury's verdict remained untouched, which was the belief it was the belief of the police at the time that Guess had not actually done anything criminal till after the verdict, meaning they couldn't retry Gill. Has she done anything criminal, though? I, I mean, she's allowed to serve on the jury, it seems. They knew about this. That's all fine. And then her falling like bizarrely, <laughs> like how old are you? <laughs> In love with someone just by looking at them and then saying like they're like voting not guilty or whatever. Um, that's kind of what juries are there to do. I'm not, like, what's going on? Country boy, I love you. This was until Guess made the carnal mistake of dumb criminals everywhere. She opened her mouth to a reporter interested in gaining a romantic scoop about Guess's love life. This led to Guess telling the story of their first kiss, which happened on the first day of the trial. Uh-oh, that's gonna change things. <laughs> Apparently, Gill had been granted bail and, as such, was allowed out of the court at lunchtime, where he then made his way to a nearby park. It was in this park that Guess found him, spoke with him, told him that she was one of the jurors, and gave him a snog. Holy shit! Don't be doing that! Although Guess assured the report that there was no bias. <laughs> Please. After all, they hadn't sexed until two months later, a whole week before the trial actually ended. Oh my god, you're so fucked. So just to summarize this mountain of stupidity, Guess, a police employee, was called for jury service to judge an accused double murderer. She claimed she fell in love with him on day one of the trial and then admitted in an interview with the press that they had kissed on the first day of the trial and had sex just before the verdict was actually returned. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. <laughs> I love you. To make matters worse, reporters would later come out and say this was obvious to everyone in the courtroom, as guests would often be caught looking at Gill and playing with her hair like a schoolgirl. Needless to say, once the full nature of what had happened was known, the verdict against Gill was overturned and a retrial was ordered, which found him guilty. He was also sentenced to a further five years and ten months for obstruction of justice. Is the woman, guess gonna get time for this? Because that does... It feels like obstruction of justice, but I feel like there could be some weird law which protects people in a jury. Um, also, it sounds like she's probably below the age of criminal responsibility, judging by her behavior. She sounds like an 11-year-old. Unfortunately, stupidity is not yet a crime, and as such, Guest was only sentenced to 12 months for contempt of court and fired from her job. Uh, I mean, a year in prison is like, that's <laughs> only, doesn't feel like only. Although, she did get a murderer off essentially yeah no okay I'm, I'm pretty chill with that that's cool now don't let they get you down news reports recently state that guess and gill are still together even if gill is going to be in the prisons in a prison cell for the rest of his worthless existence holy shit. 12 angry white men so far we focused on juries being absolute f***ing morons but now we come to a new category lawyers took advantage of the rules the rule that made it onto this episode is the peremptory challenge 
Never heard of it. To understand the peremptory challenge, though, you first have to understand a bit about how a jury is actually sworn in. First, a pool of maybe 30 to 40 jurors is called into court and then randomly assigned to the pending cases that day. After being assigned, the jurors may then be given a short questionnaire to ensure that they are not biased. See, that's the questionnaire where I'll be like, is that a crime? <laughs> Filling out that questionnaire and just being like, do you have any biases? Yes, extreme racism. <laughs> I love Hitler. <laughs> I see I I see good things about Hitler also. From there, the lawyers are given the names of the potential jurors and asked whether to uh, asked to investigate whether they think a juror may be in fact biased or maybe even have lied on the questionnaire. On the crumpet eating side of the pond, that's where we stop. At that point, a lawyer can raise something called a challenge for cause, which is a process where a lawyer tells the judge why they believe an individual juror should be dismissed and then has to explain their reason why. <laughs> He wrote, I love Hitler. <laughs> There's not even a freeform answer box. He just scrawled it all over the page. There was just enough sun for him to put out his American flag and his Nazi flag. On the burger chugging side of the pond, though, there's an extra step. The peremptory challenge. A peremptory challenge follows the standard procedure as stated above with one difference. There are a finite amount of challenges available, and the lawyer does not need to provide any reason for a peremptory challenge. In short, they allow a lawyer to handpick the jurors that they want on the jury in that case, and can only be challenged in very few scenarios. Those scenarios are where one side can later argue the peremptory challenges were used specifically to remove some particular racial, sex, or other group from the potential jury, although these challenges are notably hard to bring. Now, I know you're all thinking the same thing. You're probably thinking, well, at least it's not like the USA is world famous for an intense and historic conflict between different social groups throughout society. I'm sure no lawyer would ever use this uh, in an untoward sense. That's I wasn't thinking that, but thanks. Now I just feel dumb. This promptly brings us to the first widespread usage of the peremptory challenge and the example that convinced the crumpet eaters to abolish it back in the 1950s. The peremptory challenges were used to wide effect in lynching cases to ensure that the jury in those cases would almost be would always be entirely white isn't the point it's supposed to be a jury of your peers when it's all white dudes in super racist like 1950s america oh my god what are you up to the u.s flag probably obvious reasons yeah, I see the US. and the nazi flag why what in the world? now now i know what you're still saying again i don't know i don't i don't know liam i don't know i don't like it but liam if you're looking at the last 12 years the news has taught me anything racial tensions are at an all-time low in the usa it's not like this would continue to cause problems right um i wasn't thinking that again but also okay so maybe racial tensions are at an all-time low but there are obviously still racial tensions <laughs> Obviously. Well, my friends, if that's your opinion, I've got a bridge to sell you. On the 23rd of February, 2022, Ahmad Arbery was out for a jog in Satilla Shores, Georgia. He would never return from that jog as partway through it would be chased down by Gregory Johns McMichael, Travis James McMichael, and William Bryan. Have I heard of this case? I think I totally have heard of this case. Upon chasing him down, a struggle would ensue that would ultimately lead to Arbery's killing, later ruled a murder. Theories were abounding at the time of the trial that the murder murder was racially motivated. Evidence would be introduced at trial that it would actually result in a federal hate crime trial being convened, which would also find the McMichaels and Brian guilty of murder, which could be characterized as a hate crime. Okay. And now, why are we having to mention these human pieces of garbage? Well, at the initial Georgia trial for the murders, the defense was noted to make use of their peremptory cha challenges. Only eight black potential jurors had been called. It just happens that the defense in Georgia is granted eight peremptory challenges in a murder case, and the defense used all eight exclusively to expel the potential black jurors from the case. Are you just trying to get a mistrial? <laughs> Luckily, this was one of the cases where the jury did follow their duty. All three defendants were found guilty of the murder of Arbery and sentenced to lengthy stays in prison. Although, having viewed the numerous ways jurors have stepped wrong in this episode and the one before us, I'm sure you are aware of the danger posed by handpicking a jury. It should be noted at this point that there is substantial evidence in criminological research that race, gender, social status, and economic income do not actually affect what a juror's verdict is in England and Wales. That's very nice. Is that true? I like that. Good. I've seen numerous people raise this argument and the study reaching these findings when speaking about the Arbery case, but what they seem to fail to understand is that America is a very, very different place, and we have seen research in America show the complete opposite of the research on this side of the ponds. God save our gracious. <laughs>
feeling good about our lack of racism. Yes, we have solved it. Jesus Christ. Overruled. Overruled, judge, or is it overcooled? And that's our episode today. Thank you for watching. No, 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 I just, I, I missed the death penalty. Just start saying things like that. Well, I, I see, I 